Hi guys, so previously I've used some vintage lenses which gives a swirly bokeh effect which a lot of people seem to like and they were wondering if they don't own the lens could they possibly maybe do it in post, uh, maybe in DaVinci Resolve afterwards by filming with just a normal lens and applying some effects. And also a few people might want to get that kind of anamorphic look. Uh, some anamorphic lenses has this kind of like a uh, slightly swirly and distorted bouquet. So today we just have a quick look at how to do it in DaVinci Resolve, which to be honest is very super, super simple. So um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so we're in the color page of DaVinci Resolve and this is the original clip. As you can see, the uh, bouquet is like just from a normal lens, so it's not swirly or anything. And uh, I haven't actually done anything to this clip except the first note, I just lifted up the brightness just a little bit in uh, using the curve. So uh, let's get started. Um, I'm gonna right click. Uh, go to add node and add serial to add a new node or you can press alternate and S on your keyboard to add a node as well. Now in this node, I'm going to go to the uh, power window tab and I'm going to activate the circular one, right? So uh, if we press shift H, we can see where this power window is having an effect. So any effect we apply to this node is only going to affect uh, inside this power node, which obviously we don't want uh, that that to be the case, we want it to be affecting the outer edges of our image. So I'm just going to click the invert button. So now we can see where the effect is uh, having an effect. And I'm just going to make it so that the power window covers our main subject here. Uh, so we obviously we don't want the swirly bouquet to be affecting uh, the, uh, the lady in the image here. We want it to affect the background. So I might uh, fade it out slightly, uh, increase the size just a little bit more, uh, maybe up a bit. Oops, sorry, up a bit. Okay, maybe something like that. We can always uh, adjust it later. So I'm gonna press Shift H to get rid of the mask and so it doesn't get in the way so we can see what's happening. And now for this node, I'm gonna open up the Open Effects tab and I'm gonna search for Radio, uh, Radio Blur and I'm just gonna drag it into the node. And well, that's pretty much it, we're done. <laughs> As you can see, as I mentioned before, it's actually super, super simple. I'm quite, kind of quite embarrassed to be honest. But um, yeah, so we just have a few things to uh, to sort out. Uh, firstly, I'm not sure if you can notice, but the edge of our image is kind of gone a bit dark. Uh, so we have we can go to the border type, and usually I'll use either replicate or reflect. You can experiment with your clips, so maybe different ones will work better with different clips. But um, if you use wrap around, you can see kind of you know the edges kind of uh, become a bit brighter, and if you use black, then it kind of becomes a bit darker. So usually I'll just use either replicate or, or reflect seems to work best. Now, obviously, you can also fine tune like the how much blur uh, blurring that's going on, or how blur how much blurriness there is, or how swirly it is basically. So as you can see, you can make it super super swirly, but um, usually it's better to go for the subtle effect. So maybe not too much, maybe like 0.3 or something. And the position, you can also choose like where the center is from where the swirliness will happen. So. You can either maybe put it on the uh, in the middle of our subject, but usually I just put it in the middle of the lens, which is kind of more realistic, really, because if you're using a real lens, the the blurring, the swirliness will all kind of be emanating from the center of the lens anyway, and anyway, so it, it doesn't take into account where your subject is in the frame. Now, obviously, if you want to add even more effect to this, you you could possibly do that. So let's add another another node. Go to add serial. And I'm going to uh, connect the alpha channel of the previous node to the next node as well. So any effect we apply to this node will also affect just the outside portion of the image. So let's say we want to make, um, maybe add a prism blur effect, just to get some chromatic aberration. And you can see if I press Ctrl D to just shut off this node, you can see that, you know, there's that slight prism blur effect. You can see the, the color and the chromatic aberration, which of course you can adjust the strength of as well. You can, you know, how much the uh, the chromatic aberration is like fading out because obviously some vintage lenses will have uh, on top of the swirly bouquet, you also have like, you know, some color cast or some kind of chromatic aberration effect, which you can uh, fine tune here, which is, that's no right or wrong. It's totally up to you, like how much effect and stuff you want to apply, right? So that's, a, it just depends on the look that you're, you're looking for. But uh, just one warning, if you haven't got a very, uh, 
beefy or more modern GPU, if you apply too many uh, nodes, then obviously your machine will start to kind of slow down to, to a crawl. Now, just a quick tip before I go. Um, as with filming with the actual vintage lens, uh, this effect will work best in scenes where you have like a subject in the foreground and like a blurry out of, out of focus background with details which will help you see the swirly bouquet. So in this case, you can see like the, uh, the little lights in the background kind of helps you see the pattern. Or you can um, have something like this, you know, a subject in the foreground again and uh, out of focus background with lots of, in this case, there will be trees. So there will be lots of pattern in the back. So you can kind of like see the swirly effect clearer. So obviously if the background is like all blue sky and things and just like maybe just a white wall, you wouldn't really, really see this effect. So it would be better if you know you have like patterns in the background and things to help you see this swirly bouquet effect, which is basically exactly the same principle as when you're filming with these vintage lenses. You usually want to see the swirly bouquet. You would try to look for, you know, these background with patterns and you just like have your subject in, in the foreground in focus and the background slightly out of focus and you can see the soily pattern uh, clearer. Well, okay, that's pretty much it for today, to be honest, um, which is the effects pretty easy. Uh, honestly, I don't, I'm not sure now why I actually bought the lens. Maybe I'll put it up on eBay or something now. So uh, maybe I'll just quickly go off and do that and maybe see you next time. Bye. <laughs>